I'm going to talk a little bit today about PXI Express and especially uh, PXI Express uh, as, as it relates to test and simulation for avionics applications. So once again, thanks for joining in. Uh, just a little overview of what we will talk about today. Um, we'll talk about PCI, PXI, PCI Express, and PXI Express. So four technologies that are very closely related and, and interwork with each other. So we'll talk a little bit about how those interrelate and um, work together for PXI and uh, PXI Express solutions. We'll talk a little bit about the form factors, the hardware, uh, kind of the setup of the hardware for PXI and PXI Express. And we'll also talk about the specific test instrumentation signals that PXI solutions provide. And then finally, we'll have a short discussion about uh, avionics bus interfaces and how and why it is useful to use PXI uh, instruments for your avionics bus interfaces in some common test and simulation scenarios. <clears throat> so first we'll start with a little discussion of PCI. So PCI is Peripheral Component Interconnect. Uh, PCI is a, a shared parallel bus, so an interconnect of multiple peripherals and CPU memory and other system resources in a workstation over uh, a parallel data bus. Uh, we talk about bandwidth with PCI. Uh, so there were 32-bit and 64-bit bus uh, variants and they provided you know up to you know 533 megabit uh, megabyte per second bandwidth with a 64. Also uh, PCI originally had options for both um, for both 3.3 volt and also for uh, 5 volt operation. When we talk about PXI, uh, PXI was essentially taking PCI and integrating it uh, with some test instrumentation signals to form PXI. So uh, it was basically a slightly different form factor, add in some instrumentation signals, but still use the the 32-bit, 33 megahertz option of PCI as the main um, system communication bus uh, in the test systems. So I have a picture of a, a hybrid PCI or PXI uh, module here at the top and then a, a common PXI um, test system uh, image below there. So using the 32-bit, 33 megahertz PCI, uh, a typical PXI uh, system can provide up to 132 megabytes per second of, of bandwidth on the backplane. And the added uh, test instrumentation features provided by PXI were, first of all, a system reference clock. So that was a 10 megahertz uh, clock that was distributed across the backplane on the, the backplane connector. So there was no front end or external cabling. Uh, so all the modules in the system can be clocked if they so choose off of that reference clock that's 10 megahertz so that they can be have their internal clock synchronized. Uh, there was also a trigger bus that provided eight trigger lines and each of the modules in the system could drive or sync those trigger signals and so those could be used for custom applications for you know intermodule communications to synchronize on, on different events between the modules. And then also a star trigger was provided and what this was was this was a, a trigger line that went out from a system timing slot so a special designated slot in the system with direct lines that go out to each of the other peripheral slots uh, so that a high, um, a highly accurate with very low skew between the slots because all of the, the, the connections between the timing slot and the individual slots were impedance matched so that there was very low skew um, between the timing slot and all of the other slots that the signal would go out to. So a typical application would be that you would use that star trigger bus to reset all the clocks the actual time values to zero on the clocks and then have them reference off the 10 megahertz clock from there on and, and so that each card would have you know an exact um, absolute time value that was synchronized. So that's PCI and, um, and PXI. Now we'll move on and talk about PCI Express and, um, and PXI Express. So in the early uh, 2000s was kind of the, the, the time frame that uh, PCI Express came into existence and this was a um, kind of a major shift in the PCI family tree. Uh, one main thing was PCI Express went from a parallel bus architecture to a serial bus. And each of the serial links uh, on the PCI Express bus were dual simplex. So basically that means that the, the target module and like the system controller could communicate in, in both directions. So the system module had a dedicated line back to the controller and, and vice versa. 
And the other thing with PCI Express is it provides multiple lanes so that there can be scalable bandwidth. So uh, basically what that means is you can stack these serial um, these serial point-to-point -point links up in parallel and operate them in parallel to, um, to, to basically scale the bandwidth that's available uh, in the system. So what would happen is that each of these signals would be combined into a link and a link between a, a, the two devices can have multiple lanes and each lane basically with the original PCI Express could um, could provide up to 250 megabytes um, per direction so one in you know 250 megabytes in each direction per lane so you could have up to you know 32 lanes so combine 32 of these uh, lanes into a into a link between two modules and get up to 8 gigabytes uh, per second of bandwidth so a really large increase in the total system bandwidth available. So what, what we're looking at here next is an example of how PXI Express integrated and used uh, PCI Express while at the same time maintaining backwards compatibility with uh, PXI which only provided uh, a PCI backplane bus. So what, what the images are showing here are the, the common type of hybrid slot uh, connector that's available on the backplane or within a PXI Express chassis. And what you can see, the image on the left is what a PXI Express module would look like. So you have two connectors. The bottom one is where the PXI Express signals are, and the top one is the, the XJ4 where the, the PXI timing and synchronization signals were. And then what you have in the middle is a compact PCI module. So this is a module that doesn't uh, support the PXI timing and synchronization signals. It only provides the 32-bit PCI uh, bus interfaces. So that could also fit in this slot. And then what you have finally is what's called a hybrid slot compatible PXI module. So this is a module that provides clearance where the PCI Express connector is on the PXI Express backplane um, so that you can plug this into that slot which also has the PCI bus interface available on it. So this is this is what the common setup is in, in you know some of the newest PI, PXI Express module or chassis, and uh, you know as you can see it's it's highly backwards compatible. Each slot can uh, can house either PCI slash PXI modules or PXI Express modules. If we talk about what's actually going on on those signals, so we have the the P4 or the XP4 again at the top and this is where all the instrumentation signals are are, um, are connected then in the middle there's the P3 where there is up to eight lanes of PCI Express available so with those uh, with those eight lanes to any hybrid slot you can get up to two gigabytes per second of dedicated bandwidth between the controller and that slot and that's dedicated bandwidth that's not shared with any other modules like it would be in uh, in a PCI system and then in P1, that's where you have the legacy 32-bit, uh, 33 megahertz PCI signal and your 132 megabytes of shared bandwidth at the, the peripheral slot for that. Uh, in addition to adding uh, P PCI Express, the PXI Express um, evolution of the, the PXI backplane also added some additional instrumentation signals. Uh, one of these was a 100 uh, megahertz reference clock. So this was a differential clock. Uh, so the original 10 megahertz was referenced to ground. And so there's some complications and, and issues that go on at higher, higher frequencies with that. So PXI Express introduced some differential clocking and synchronization. And what that allowed was a 100 um, megahertz reference clock so that uh, you could get uh, higher resolution in the synchronization and synchronized clock signal um, across all the modules in the system. PXI Express also added three additional three additional differential star triggers. So again, the star trigger is the trigger that goes from the system and timing slot and that is impedance matched on its way out to all the peripheral slots so that the skew and when that actual pulse arrives at each of the slots um, you know, can, be, can be very tightly coupled with a very low skew. Uh, with, with these differential star triggers, um, there's basically three of them. Two of them go from the timing slot out to the modules. And then there's one that's reserved to come from the modules back to the timing slot so that the modules can be you know, sending something back uh, that's, 
with you know low low variance back to the, the timing slot. There's also um, was an additional sync 100 uh, signal that was added with PXI Express, and what this was was it's it's basically there so that modules that are clocking off of the 100 megahertz clock and modules that are clocking off the 10 megahertz clock can be synchronized. And so what happens here is this this sync 100 is just a uh, something that's asserted every 10 cycles of the 100 megahertz clock so that it can basically be used as a 10 megahertz reference that's synchronized to the 100 megahertz reference. If we go through and survey here some of the um, avionics bus interface instruments that are available for PXI Express specifically, I have kind of a summary here of what we provide um, at AIT. So first of all, uh, we have a, a mill standard 1553 instrument, and this can provide up to four uh, simultaneous mill standard 15, 1553 bus interfaces. So interface four buses at the same time on a single slot, um, and each one of those buses can be a bus controller, multiple RTs, and also a monitor at the same time. Then we have uh, also a PXI Express Airing 429 card. Uh, this can provide up to 64 um, Airing 429 channels in a single slot, so up to 32 transmitters or outputs and up to 32 inputs in, a, in the same slot. And also on each of those outputs, uh, that module is able to do a variable or software programmable uh, amplitude of the output signal and also add in a DC offset um, for that output 429 signal. Also an avionics ethernet or an Airink 664 uh, PXI Express interface module is available and this module can support uh, 10 megabit, 100 megabit, up to gigabit ethernet uh, for both optical and electrical uh, interfaces, physical interfaces, so it uses an SFP and can interface um, you know both variants of the physical interface for for ethernet. Uh, then uh, also a 1, 2, and 4 gigabit uh, per second fiber channel interface is available. That provides two fiber channel network interfaces and can operate over um, basically a range of uh, fiber channel baud rates between one and four gigabits per second. <laughs> then we can also provide a mil standard 1760 or high speed 1760 um, PXI express test instrument that's capable of doing uh, 1553 over ethernet and acting as a network controller or a network terminal and that module can operate at a one gigabit per second uh, fiber channel speed. Then finally, um, we have available a shared memory or reflective memory interface module that can be used to basically share data uh, with super low latency uh, using a two gigabit per second uh, fiber optic ring network. And that can be used to synchronize data across multiple PXI and PXI Express chassis or test systems. And then all these modules uh, are also capable of providing support for the PXI star, the 10 megahertz clock, and the, uh, the PXI triggers and with support for up to four lanes of PCI Express on the, the data interface to the host computer. If we talk about some test applications where PXI Express uh, makes sense, specifically in the avionics uh, realm, we have uh, one, one first thing to consider is with kind of the explosion of the use of, of Ethernet and also fiber channel there are you know, a lot of requirements to be able to do test and verification of avionics, um, ethernet, and fiber channel switches. And these are typically 16, 24, and even up to 32 port switches. And so you, know, you, you have to or want to be able to stack up a lot of uh, interface modules with an interface module having you know, you know, a single slot, typically two or maybe four um, ethernet or fiber channel interfaces in it. You need to stack several cards up in a single system to be able to test all of the, the ports on a, you know, say a 24 or 32 port switch. And with you know 18 slot PXI Express systems readily available, that makes PXI very attractive for those kinds of requirements. Uh, also, when you're testing a switch, you have to do a lot of load testing and uh, overloading of the switch. And one of the common things you want to do is you want to be able to hit the switch with traffic, uh, you know, Ethernet or fiber channel frames at exactly the same time on all the ports, or at least on several of the the ports of the switch at the same time. So. With uh, you know things like the star trigger and the, the reference clocks and the the easy ability to synchronize across multiple modules, uh, this becomes very easy in a PXI Express type of system. Uh, also, there's an ever increasing number of gateways or data concentrators that you can see, and these are common in, in commercial avionics. And with these uh, these types of LRUs or, or system components, 
latency between the you know the legacy bus and the, the backbone high-speed network uh, through that device is, is pretty important and has to be tested and so this is also becomes very easy with PXI Express because you can do things like synchronize the onboard clock of an Airing 429 test instrument with an Ethernet test instrument and use it to to measure with really high precision the latency from say a, a 429 label going into a gateway and in the associated Ethernet packet coming out the other side so another good test application where PXI Express makes sense. And then we have uh, data acquisition systems. So in a lot of, you know, say military avionic systems, you can see multi-bus architectures with, you know, 10 or, or even more uh, mil standard 1553 buses. Or if we're talking Airing 429, you can see hundreds of Airing 429 channels. And if you want to be able to capture and acquire data from all of these simultaneously, um, you know, you need high slot counts, you need multiple modules to be synchronized uh, in terms of their clocks so that you can correlate all the, the, the uh, captured and acquired data. So in these types of situations, again, PXI Express is a good choice. Um, then, then the other thing is, you know, a lot of these new avionic systems based on fiber channel and Ethernet are just really high bandwidth systems. You know, multiple fiber channel buses or rings or multiple uh, Ethernet devices, which data must be acquired from. Um, you know, with Ethernet speeds from 10 megabit all the way up to 10 gigabit per second. And in these types of applications, you just have a requirement for the, the super high dedicated bandwidth between the, the, the controller or some kind of a mass storage device and the avionics interface module. So just to name a few there, that's some common types of applications that are well suited and, and well resolved and, and satisfied using PXI Express and avionics interfaces. Um, that, that use P, you know, come in PXI Express form factors. So quick summary of what we talked about here. So PXI and PXI Express combine um, you know, the, the common and ubiquitous PCI and PCI Express uh, system buses with some test instrumentation and additional timing and synchronization signals. Um, and that creates uh, basically a test system architecture that is highly suited for test and simulation applications and requirements that are commonly found in the avionics environment. And PXI Express, you know, provides increased system bandwidth and enhanced more accurate synchronization over PXI. And with the ever increasing amounts of bandwidth and higher speed of, of the, you know, latest avionics systems, PXI Express is, you know, well suited for these. <coughs> and there are, you know, uh, quite a few avionics bus interface modules. For instance, for 1553, Airing 429, different variants of avionics Ethernet, like Airing 664, and different uh, variants of fiber channel used in avionics, uh, all readily available and off the shelf with, you know, software support, et cetera, uh, for PXI Express. <coughs>